every once in a while I'll run across a plane that works fine when it's being used to take a normal cut, but when the blade is retracted to try and take an ultra fine smoothing cut, the plane just won't cut. At first, it'll seem like the blade was just retracted a bit too far. So you advance the blade until the blade just starts to cut, but then the cut is much too heavy. So you do this kind of dance with adjusting the blade between not cutting at all and cutting much too heavy. This is a very frustrating problem with an almost as equally frustrating solution. Now it's very common for this to happen with old wooden bodied hand planes because the wood continues to move over its lifetime, expanding and contracting with seasonal changes in humidity. It's not so common for this to happen with an iron bodied plane but it can still happen. The cause of the problem is a warp in the plane sole, and the only solution is to flatten the sole. Now, this isn't such a big deal with a wooden bodied plane. In fact, it's part of the routine maintenance of owning wooden bodied planes, but it can be kind of a headache if you have to do it with an iron bodied plane. Now, it's important to note that it's absolutely critical that you are sure that this is a problem with the plane before you attempt to fix it. In order for a plane to take an ultra fine smoothing cut, the surface of the board has to be very flat. If your plane is set for an ultra fine cut and it's cutting intermittently along the board or it's only cutting at the two ends of the board, then it's more than likely that your board is not flat enough. So check the board and make sure it's flat enough before you attempt to fix the plane. Now, once I've confirmed that the board is flat, just like I did with the frog in the last video, I'm going to use an accurate straight edge and I'm going to check the sole of the plane along its length and across its width before I attempt to fix it. Many people have made plane soles a lot worse by trying to flatten them, especially when they didn't need it. Also, Flattening a plane sole should only be required for planes that are intended to take an ultra fine cut, like smoothing planes. Now, an argument could also be made that a jointer plane really needs a nice flat sole, and I won't argue with that assessment. But a plane like a jack plane or a scrub plane should never need to have its sole flattened because these planes are really intended to take thick, rough cuts. Once you've confirmed with absolute certainty that the plane needs to be fixed, remove the blade. Now, you could just retract the blade instead of removing it completely, but I find that there's a lot less chance of the swarf and the grit from lapping is gonna get up and damage the edge of the cutting iron than if I just take the blade out completely. Regardless of what you might have heard on the internet, you don't need the blade in the plane to go through this process. I use 220 grit paper to lap plane soles, and I don't find that you need anything coarser than that. And in fact, if you do go much coarser than 220, I find that you can make things a lot worse a lot faster. So it's best to start off with something a little bit lighter grit. And I also keep a brush close by for cleaning off the paper and removing all of that lapping swarf each time I stop to check the sole. Now it's critical when lapping plane soles that you don't rock the plane side to side. It's not so easy to rock it front to back, but side to side can be pretty easy to do. And you don't want to do that because then you're going to abrade the outside edges of the plane faster than the center, and that's going to cause the plane to be convex across the width of the sole, and you really don't want that. So when I lap, I tend to hold the frog, the, the frog and not the handles. Holding the handles, you're going to have that tendency to, to want to rock the plane. By kind of overlapping my hands this way, right over the frog, um, it, it evens out the pressure over the center of the plane so that as I'm lapping the plane, I'm not rocking it side to side. So I'm going to lap the sole just a few strokes and then I'm going to stop to check and see where it's being abraded. I'm also going to brush all this junk off 
each time I stop to check the sole. And you can go ahead and color the bottom of the sole with a magic marker if you want to better be able to judge your progress. Now because a plain sole is such a big piece of metal, you want to be sure to change this paper often. This is not going to be the time to try to save a few bucks on sandpaper. This paper is going to wear out and dull very quickly. And if you're not careful and don't use the whole surface, and even if you do use the whole surface, the center is going to tend to dull quicker than the outside edges, just because you're using and passing over that center so much more frequently than you are the edges. And what that means is these outer edges of the paper are going to cut faster than the center when it begins to dull. That again is going to cause the outside edges of the plain sole to wear down faster than the center and you're going to create that convex shape across the width of the sole that you really don't want. So even though this is a pretty large surface and I'm using two full sheets of sandpaper, you can see the center of the sandpaper is getting darker much quicker than the outer edges because essentially I'm using it twice as fast as the outer edges. So if you don't change this paper often enough, it's going to dull faster in the center and you're going to end up wearing down these outer edges much faster than the center and creating that convex profile that I'm talking about. And if you do create a plane with that kind of profile, you're going to have a near impossible time trying to fix that convex sole and get it flat again. So to help you keep from making that profile that you don't want, make sure to stop frequently, check the sole both along its length and across its width. Make sure you aren't creating a convex profile. And again, use your brush, clean off the paper, and change this paper often. Something else that I'll do to help prevent rocking is to turn the plane around and reverse my grip. So now the knob is closer to me and the tote is farther away. And again, this helps to even things out, keep nice even pressure. And let the plane, let the weight of the plane in your hands do most of the work. When your paper begins to dull, don't try to get it to cut faster by putting more pressure down that's just going to make things worse. Change the paper instead. Also, I'm using this big granite surface plate because I have it. I've had it for oh, over 20 years now. But you don't have to go out and, and buy something like this. You can use an old granite countertop if you have a piece of that. A long piece of float glass that you can get from a good glass supplier. Or even a, a marble or granite threshold for a floor. They usually come in three to four foot lengths. And you can pick those up at any home center or hardware store. And as long as you have a good flat surface to work on, on your workbench, they'll be plenty flat and rigid enough to lap a plain sole. So it's taken me about 20 minutes or so and about six sheets of sandpaper, but I've gotten this sole to a point now that I'm happy with it. So my straight edge tells me that it's flat in both directions and we're nice and polished on both sides of the mouth and for most of the length of the plane. You can see there's still some marker left at the very toe and at the very heel. So those spots are a little bit low, but I'm okay with that. Most of the length of the plane is nice and flat and most importantly, 
the area in front of the mouth and towards the front and rear are nice and flat and in a single plane. And that's really the most important thing is to get an area somewhere towards the back, somewhere towards the front and right in front of the mouth, nice and flat and in a single plane. If you've got a low spot in here or at the very toe or at the very heel, not a big deal. Now it's going to be very important to make sure you clean the sole very well after lapping. You're creating a lot of iron filings and you're exposing a fresh surface on the sole of that plane. So now you've got fresh raw metal, some iron filings. That's a recipe for rust to start forming. So make sure you brush it off real good and then you can use some alcohol or a little mineral spirits, some kind of solvent and wipe down the sole of the plane. Make sure you get all of those iron filings off so that we don't start to create flash rust. It's also not a bad idea to put a little wax on the sole. That will also help to not prevent completely, but discourage rust. With a flat sole and a freshly sharpened blade, the plane can now take a shaving so thin you can read through it. But more importantly, the surface is as smooth as glass.